help people understand what it means for either their business or we help you know, councils, state governments um, adapt to climate change, make them more resilient. Um, that's why I'm doing my 9 to 5. Um, however, I have been diving since I was 14, always just leisurely. And um, last year, I, I kind of wanted to merge the two worlds. Because I work in climate change, and I love, I love the ocean, I love diving. Um, so I took a sabbatical and I went and volunteered for a marine conservation organization at uh, Russia Umpa, uh, with one of the most vibrant reefs in the world. And you know, I was working on scientific dives, and it really put a purpose behind the diving, which I think is, you know, the audience that we have today. You're all scuba divers. You've witnessed, you know, these changes firsthand, and you can also put some purpose behind this incredible skill that we have. It, it really makes it just that much better. So, um, yeah, that that was really um, a great, um, yeah, a great, great six months. Um, and then, you know, coming back. I'm a Swiss citizen and I uh, always had a passion for the ocean. Growing up in Italy, my grandparents house uh, at the ocean military park at sea. And originally from a background of biology and research, I slowly decided to switch towards marine biology. And I performed that in Portugal, but then had the opportunity to come to Australia to do my master research. And I've been so for the last year and a half here at Brisbane, I'm in Brisbane with TVT, studying uh, reef fishes of Eastern Australia and how they are affected by climate change in the last 15 years and that uh, and the result of and the results of those research are not very encouraging which kind of pushed me or encouraged me to try to make actions and Try to propagate those information and, and share those knowledge uh, in the world that is not well informed or well connected to the ocean. Or that it's very similar to ocean literacy in that respect because you don't care about what you don't know, and that's kind of yeah the whole idea. Um, again, it all kind of comes into that idea of science communication, and if you can effectively communicate with ocean literacy and science communication, what like you know, scientific research or just you know, everything that's going on in the world to non-scientists and that can be the public or policy makers, politicians, decision makers, then we can, that is where we'll see the real change. They can then make informed decisions around policy and that kind of thing and that's where we're going to see all of our real federal changes from now. Uh, I mean, I'm also a marine master, sorry, master's student in marine and Antarctic science, focusing on governance and policy. So in five years, I would still like to be voluntary for the Amazon climate, um, but I would also like to be, hopefully by then, a marine social scientist or closer on my way to being that, um, and using my individual power to make more of a yeah, collective change um, at, hopefully, federal level. Of destruction, and it's from the perspective of politicians or scientists or media who like a dramatic story. And we know part of that is very true, we know what's changing. Um, but we know as divers that it's, it's a much more complex and nuanced story than that. We've got our heads in the water every day, we see change, um, but we also see the magic of what's under there. Um, and so, how do we get that story into advocacy, into politics, into media? How do we get that diver experience, that collective experience and story heard? So, that's what Divers for Climate is about. Um, in Australia, there's 170 climate groups. Can anyone guess how many are related to the ocean? No guesses? I'll tell you, three of 170. Yet, when things happen in the ocean, all the, they all want to talk about it without very much thinking about the people on the front lines, which are divers, divers and tourism workers. So, our mission is to change that, get our voices heard. Um, so we. We do a lot of storytelling, we do films, we do media, we try and do traditional media as well as social media, and we do political advocacy. So the federal election come up in Australia, and we like to make friends with people across the political spectrum to try and shift the narrative about climate in a way that's both effective for action, um, but it's also positive for tourism. We know climate and tourism can be a tricky story because we still rely on a lot of uh, fossil fuels. And that's complicated and there's no clear answer at the moment, but we're ready to kind of tackle that conversation. We have History Bay, 
um, with signs, with a drone camera to say that we would like candidates for the upcoming federal election to tell us what they're going to do for our oceans and for climate. Um, because a lot of divers are doing what they can, a lot of tourism operators are doing what they can. We need that to be matched at a higher level. And so that's what Divers for Climate is about. But I'm sure the others will tell you a bit more about this morning. That's brilliant, Rolanda. I think even more strength and power to you because you really need to get uh, the policy and the government going on this. So it so resonates with the Young Environment, this program Trust in the Oceans of India, who is really trying to enforce ocean literacy and climate education into the school and college curriculum so that you have more citizen scientists and students exposed, young people exposed to choosing a career and a passion for the oceans if not like a, uh, you know, being an oceanographist or a marine biologist or a diver or choosing to fight climate change. Well, Nicholas is going to come. Over to you Nicholas, five years from now where do you see yourself and how would you do this to get uh, into the classroom for ocean literacy through uh, photography and coaching. Thank you. So I think in five years I hope I've you know continued to do my humble part in getting more people able to you know take great photos and spread the word. But maybe my closing note is more for photography in general and what we what we have to share. So I happen to be judging uh, here and there some photography competitions and we often have an environment category, right? A category where it's more about you know showing the good news but also the bad news of what's happening in the environment and the, the water. And well, these days there's a lot of bad news to be shared, but I'm just hoping that in five years' time, when if I happen to judge some of these competitions, we'll be choosing between a lot of good news stories as well. So that's, that's my hope. That's a fabulous note to end on because just keep positive and keep the power of positivity whenever you go dive. Each dive is going to make a difference. So what they're point on on target. It's the government, it's the governance and the policy that needs to change. And these guys and girls here today are really, uh, you know, sharp, uh, focused on that. And that's going to really hit uh, not only Australia, but globally, right? So, um, more strength to you guys. Adriana, over to you for the closing note. Um, I think I still want to keep my foot into science and research and try to play a new role in developing and studying climate change and the effect on the ocean. But that being said, I really want to transmit that and, and verbalize that to the whole population and disperse the knowledge and sometimes cryptic knowledge um, to schools, workshops, um, and such events to kind of broaden a bit the knowledge of how exposure of the ocean to climate change. And maybe in Australia or around the world, I don't know, we'll see. Excellent going. And of course, we're here celebrating diving and I mean a great group like Divers for Climate making it all the way here. And I'd love to end with a powerful message from my mentor over the last two decades is Dr. Sylvia Earle is without blue there's no green. And believe me, biodiversity is important and the forests are important. But our underground coral forests, rainforests of the ocean, our reefs and our marine biodiversity are is equally important. And we are standing testimony here on stage here today to tell you that. And do we have much more time? Two minutes more. Oh thank you so much for being a lovely audience. I see that we have a great audience here today and we can't be more thankful to Adex and to Austec and the Ocean Conference here in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much.